So, I was down in Texas last Thanksgiving, and considering it's Thanksgiving and we're about to eat so much food, I figured I probably better get my run in early. Now, I've got some pump-up jams going, I'm loving the 50-degree weather, I'm stoked to be on a run, and I get to my first major intersection, and looking both ways, I decide, hey, I'm going to turn left, and I run past this water tower, but the reason I turned left is because left looks way less hilly than turning right. Oh boy, was I wrong. So about a mile into my left-hand turn, and I'm way out in the wilderness at this point, I see this massive downhill, which should be exciting, but of course that means there's a massive uphill further along the way. And I'm about a mile and a half into my run, so I'm thinking, dude, I can do it. Like, this isn't going to be a problem at all. Hitting the valley of said hill, I realized pretty quickly that this was a mistake, but I'm at the bottom of the hill, so either way I'm going to have to run up at some point, so I decided to keep going. Now, I'm dying my way up this incline, and I'm hating whoever it was that engineered this city, even though I've never met them, and partway up I glance to what I'm pretty sure is north, and I see these two water towers that I'm like, I guarantee you I passed those earlier. Now, I'm convinced that I'm Lewis and Clark, not one of them, but both of them, so I decide to navigate my way home based on these water towers. Funny thing is, they are a lot farther away than I remembered, but you know, maybe the running uphill is affecting my judgment, so I decide to head toward them. Now, I finally get over this hill, again, I'm dying, and I reach the street name I recognize, so I start running towards that road, and I see the road that goes into my neighborhood, and at this point, we only got like a half mile left, I mean, I'm tired after running up this hill, but I'm close now, like, I can do this. I keep running, and the road names are looking way familiar, but I have never seen like any of these landmarks before. So just to double check, I plug home into Google Maps on my phone, which I've had this whole time. And as it turns out, I am neither Lewis nor Clark, because I am two miles away from home in the dead opposite direction I thought I was. So clearly I was looking at two brand new water towers, because way off in the distance, now that I've flipped a U, I can see a water tower, and it's the water tower that I passed at the very beginning. So fast forward about a half mile in the right direction, and I realize I haven't even been in the correct city, because here on my left, I am passing the city limit sign. Awful. Three, four mile run turned into like a five and a half mile run. I was dead. I tell you all this to say, compasses, like the one that I had on my phone the whole time, are extremely important to our ability to get around because they make sure that we're headed in the right direction, whether you're roughing it with a handheld compass or even using Google Maps on your phone, like I should have been doing the whole time, instead of relying on water towers. Have you ever wondered though, I mean, how do we know that all compasses actually point in the correct direction? So today we're gonna build a homemade one and find out. Okay, so for this lab, you're gonna need a magnet, a refrigerator magnet works just fine. You're gonna need a large steel sewing needle and then a few smaller steel sewing needles. You're gonna need a pencil or a pen, and then also some string. And very last thing is a wide mouthed jar or cup, okay? So first thing we need to do is magnetize our large steel needle, because this is actually gonna be um, the, kind of the key part of our compass here. So you're gonna do that by just rubbing the pointed end of it against a magnet. The instructions say 30 to 50 times, but really it's however long it takes for this to become magnetized. What we're doing is aligning all of the electrons to this pointed end of the needle. We're going to go ahead and test and see if that became magnetized. I should be able to pick up one of the other needles here. So it looks like we're in business, but let's do just a few more for good measure. Okay, so now we're ready to set up our magnet. 
So go ahead and on your string, you're going to make just a knot around your, around your needle here. And we want it so that if we let it just hang there, it kind of hangs parallel to the ground. So just like that. And then you're going to knot the other side around your pencil or pen or whatever utensil you're using to hold it inside the cup. Now, Kansas, pretty windy, so we're going to use this cup to just kind of help block from the wind. Okay, so go ahead and lay that across here. And just give your, give your needle a few spins here so that it can kind of do what it needs to do. And I want you to take a look at it and notice what direction the pointed side of your needle is facing. So there are two things that we know at this point in our lab for sure. One of them is that the electrons are in the pointed end of the needle because at the very beginning of this, you magnetize that needle, which really just means you aligned or concentrated the electrons in that pointed end. Second thing is electrons have a negative charge. So using those two things, I want you to just think for a second. If the needle is a mini version of Earth's magnetic poles, right? We have our normal north and south direction poles, but the needle is a mini version of the magnetic poles. Which magnetic pole would be negative, north or south? Okay, just like that, you have created your very own homemade compass. And really, I mean, it's a great way to show how magnetism works within Earth's natural magnetic field because even little tiny things like needles are going to respond the same way that our Earth's big magnetic poles are going to respond. Now, if you still have a little bit of time today, as kind of an extension, the Chinese were the ones who originally invented this hanging compass and they used it to navigate oceans but other people devised what we call a floating compass. So I want you to see if you can create or engineer kind of a floating compass also. And there are two things that I want you to answer with that. One is, does your needle point in the same direction as it did in the hanging compass? And number two is, what does that tell you about Earth's magnetic field? All right, so I hope this cleared some things up for you about how compasses are made and even how they work. But really, if you don't get anything else out of this lab, if you happen to go on a run in a city you don't really know very well, make sure to use Google Maps. Have a great day, people.